Hello everyone, so in this video I want to show you how easy it is with the latest version to uh, use TCL commands, especially HTTPS commands coming from HTTPS in order to plot curves, whatever your uh, time history file. So let's start off uh, with a look at how we can do things interactively. So uh, I just let on the left hand side uh, the model uh, which corresponds to my time history file. So it's a cell drop fun test with a global contact for all the components of the uh, phone. And in a previous video, I showed how, how in, in HyperMesh I authored a script to generate one sub contact for each pair of component, which was whose distance was lower than a given tolerance. Uh, I would put it on a tail. Uh, in this video, so that you can refer to this video if needed. And now I want to plot um, the curves. So let's say, for instance, to start with, that I want to use the current plot. So this is my current plot, and I want to pick one request, and for this request I want fnx, fny, fnz. So for this, we're not familiar maybe yet with a uh, hype graph when you load a time history file, and we have different time history format. Uh, uh, you can find the li complete list here. It can be HoDB, it can be this plot for LS Dyna, it could be uh, some file from Optistruct, you can load them, it can be motion solve results, punch file, etc. etc. Uh, F0, Sys, Nastran file. Uh, once you've loaded them, you um, hypergraph is reading and trying to set up a hierarchy. First, defining the types, uh, different types of outputs. So here I make global variables for radius, energies, global energies, um, momentum, time, mass, time step. Then I have the output for all my nodes, if I requested nodes. Um, then I have my interface type and I can have multiple types because I store them in different entities in radius. Then I have my requests. So for this, given... Um, Request that I uh, authored in Radius, I have several contacts which are available, so hold the contacts for each pair of contact. And for each request, I have the same component, which are the forces, uh, normal tangential forces, and the resultant. So let's have a look at global variable. Let's say that I want the internal kinetic energy and the total energy, which is the sum between both, and I want the magnitude of them. And let me hit on plot. Uh, I have this unit um, system. I will come back later on this, how you can deal with it. But let's start with this. And here you have the three plots that are, um, the three curves that are plotted. Um, you see that total energy is not constant because there are some additional energy we should take into account. Uh, maybe it's contact energy or external forces work, which make that the um, balance of energy is not constant. However, let's go back to automation. Let's have a look at HWC. What do we see? We have this four option, X, Y option, plot options enabled true. So we allow the plots to be um, plotted. Uh, X, Y option layout destination equal current plot. This is Y re reported. We have the layout value. And then we have this X, Y load with the source file the Y data type, and you see that the three Y data type, uh, sorry, the Y data type, so it's global variable, one single, but in the Y request, we define both internal energy, kinetic, and T energy, and then Y components equal whole. So again, if you compare Y type, sorry, showing again HWC, global variable, Y request internal kinetic and total energy. Uh, and you see that there is a dash here because it takes everything between internal and kinetic energy. So this case, and then you have a comma, uh, total energy. And component magnitude, component equal all. Uh, it takes whatever it is available here. So this is pretty simple, and which means that if you do some other kind of plot and say that I'm interested into my interfaces and I want to pick the five or six or seven in that case um, 
event. It's written here, by the way. Uh, request here, and I want the uh, normal force and the rigid uh, tangential force. And I say that I want one plot per request. And then I can choose my layout, uh, which means um, so seven was maybe not the correct number. Let's remove one of them. Let's take the six ones and let's pick a layout with six. Um, right now, the, the layouts are pretty frozen. So let's pick one which all six plots on the same page. And let's hit on plots. So what do we see? We see that the six uh, curves have been, or the 12 plots, because there were uh, two components, have been plotted. If I go to HWC, we see that now the XY option layout destination equal one plot per request, XY option layout equal 11, and XY load file, we are loading this file. The Y data type is my subcontacts. The request we are pointing from 44 sub 1 to, to 49 sub 1 28. And we have two components, which is NF resultant normal force and TF uh, resultant tangent force. So it means you can really quickly plot any data in your uh, curve from the HWC syntax. The main point now is, okay, it's easy to write them, to push them to hypergraph, but how do I read the information that I have in uh, my um, time history file? So for this, we'll take a few commands uh, that I've written here as an example. In this command, we'll start with the hwi get session handle my session, which is literally every command, every uh, automation in Hyperview Hypergraph starts with this command. Um, so as I already used my um, command window here, I probably need first to, to clean it. My session release handle. This will be better. And then I can use HWI get session handle my session. Once I have done this, uh, I will use this command uh, for defining or the, the extensions for the possible extensions for my time history file. Here I took one old example when I, where I wanted to show uh, punch files. Uh, and by the way, you could reorder anyhow the, the different points here. Um, I will ask the user to select the time history file with this TK get open file and then we'll store it into. Um, a, a hyperview um, handle. Let's, say. So let's pick the T01. Here it is. And here again, uh, my file, I probably need to re handle first. Um, my file, sorry. Sometimes eating faster than keyboard. And then I can get my file, my session get data file handle, my file th file. So now, what does that mean is that um, with this, I can browse in my uh, time history organization, which means I can query for the uh, data types, the types or data types, I can query for the requests, and I can query for the components with TCL. So let's have a look, my file get, okay, sorry. Here you see we get the data type list, the requests list, get request list, which is not shown, and the component list. So start, let's start with get data type list. And we could even store it into set my data type list, my DTL, and I will put it into my file get data type list. And I have this list with time global variable, check, not rigid body master, check, interface phone floor, check, interface my subcontext, check, and one hidden one, which is index. 
Then I can have my contact um, set my contact request list, which will be, for instance, um, I could say that it is my file get request list, and here we need the data type. So. What I could do is ask by interface, or I could say, okay, I will pick uh, the latest visible increment here, so L index, dollar, my DT DTL, my data type list, and not the last one because there is index which is hidden, but contact. And then I have all my contact between request 44 to request 2019. And in the two cases, I store them in the list. Also, what I could do is um, ask for the component list, for the one on the right. Uh, again, I can, or but it's not necessary, but I can store it in the list. It just gets component list. And again, for component list, we need the data type. Uh, we not need this information, but which data type it belongs to. So again, and index my DTL um, and minus one, and then I will get my three. I forgot the dollar, pretty usual uh, when I write too fast. So you see all the information uh, normal false, normal false, uh, I think the normal false, and you see even more information that are. It's not written exactly the same way, so you need to, these are really the, the values that you need to extract, not the one exactly from the GUI. And so once you have this information, it's pretty straightforward to get back to HWC. Here, for instance, I have this command where I plotted six uh, of these 12 curves. I can pick them, select the four of them, and right-click, copy to TCL. If I do so, um, what it will show to me is this, it adds HWC as a prefix, and then I can change some of the arguments. So here, for instance, I don't want this long line anymore with the path to my file. I want just to replace it by .th file. And here, for instance, for the Y request, uh, instead of this one, I could say that I want the sixth last one, let's say. So, an index dollar my contact rec list. Hope I'm not missing with my uppercase and syntax. My contact rec list. Okay, so I'm good. And I want to go to n minus five, and I want the same, but this time I will replace n minus five by n. Otherwise, I will just plot one value. And here, my components are normal force resultant, resultant normal force to tangential self force resultant tangent force. And so, if I pick this four comments, copy and paste in the TCL part of my code. So look, we are on page two, and let me hit enter. Okay, so now we have three page with a different curve. So there is one last thing to, to be reviewed. Uh, which is how to deal with uh, this unit pop-up that is uh, showing every time. So let me show it. Uh, let me show you how to do it. What you just need to do is to go to the file handle, so my file, and here you will say set. So you see that we have the unit system, the set unit system binding here. What will interest us is set unit. And between uh, double quotes, none, 
if you want um, to avoid any units or you can define the units as same order as GUI so it should be length mass um, so you can retrieve this from the GUI um, set unit system my bad and here it is and now if you go back to your file just to take these four options to plot again four curves and just paste them and has to look I have eight page because I did some tests but look at the number of page I have a ninth page now so you are now able to get rid of the proper so I really hope this will help you um, of doing more automation in hypergraph plotting curves. Thanks for reviewing this video and see you later for another video. Goodbye everyone.